Hello again, Gary Stearman. Time for another daily update from Prophecy in the News. This one being scheduled for release on March the 29th, a Friday. And in studio with us today, the author of this book, Bill Salas, author and lecturer. The book is Psalm 83, and it's all about, well, Psalm 83. Bill Salas, welcome to Prophecy in the News. Gary, it's great to be back on your program again and to see you in such good spirits. Bill, uh, before we talk about your book and what's going on in the Middle East, I just want to mention this book, Psalm 83, is the biggest seller in the history of prophecy in the news. We've offered books for years mm. uh, by Christian authors, and we are pleased to do so. But of all the books we've ever offered, yours is stirring up the most excitement we've ever seen, and there's got to be a reason for that. Uh, it deals, basically, with what's happening in today's newspapers. Israel as a nation struggling for existence, surrounded by a group of enemies who have sworn that they want to wipe Israel out to the last Jew. And they are not at all bashful about saying that. So this is where we start. And we're watching this very carefully from uh, half a world away. Here we are in America watching all this. Is there going to be war in Israel? Well, uh, according to the Bible, there's going to be a series of wars. And the one I'm watching for probably first in the sequence is the Psalm 83 war, which, which talks about a climactic concluding Arab-Israeli war where the Arabs do specifically state in Psalm 83 verse 4 that they want to destroy the nation, that the name of Israel can be remembered no more. And I think the, 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 thing, the reason that this book has got such intrigue right now is because it, it's, we're watching the Bible prophecies roll off the pages of the Bible and display themselves on the news. And you and I are both very careful about not uh, doing commentary on newspaper exegesis. But the fact of the matter is, you know, it's undeniable what's going on right now. And there's a reason that Barack Obama in his uh, second term, his first appointment overseas is to go over to the Middle East. There's a right. reason John Kerry as his new Secretary of State, the first trip abroad, is to go over to the Middle East. There's concern between Iran's nuclear program or Syria's chemical weapons or Egypt's uh, commotion that the opposition is about to bust loose against the, the Morsi Muslim Brotherhood. There's serious concerns and they're feeling if they don't get peace between the Palestinians and the Jews real quick, which would be this, the sort of the cure-all of all things they think, although I, I don't agree with that, um, they're thinking we could have we could have the war of epic bi biblical proportion coming on. They must be thinking that. And it, when that war comes, <clears throat> it's going to involve a lot of people. Uh, and from our perspective, we see tiny Israel surrounded by many, many uh, fanatic enemies who have professed uh, death to Israel. Uh, as often as they can stand up in front of a TV camera, they're willing to say that. So this is, comes as no surprise to us. We're sitting over here in the United States. Uh, where do we fit, uh, Bill? I, I know there are a lot of Christians watching today. Uh, and by the way, if you've got questions, listen, this is the book, because Bill has uh, exhaustively dealt with uh, the outcomes of these wars in the Middle East, and I think he has some very good ideas. But we're sitting here as Americans in the year 2013. What's this going to mean to us, to America? to our system of democracy, to our economy? What, where do you stand on that? Absolutely, because a war of the magnitude that we're talking about involving the Arab enemies in Psalm 83 that share common borders with Israel and the terrorist populations within inside of those borders, Hezbollah, Hamas, Muslim Brotherhood, etc., will have an effect, it, it undoubtedly will have an effect on the whole world. So we'll, we'll focus in on America, and actually, I have two chapters in the book, Psalm 83, The Missing Prophecy Revealed, dealing with America. One chapter is called, the future of, What is the Future of America in Bible Prophecy? And two is, What is America's Role in Psalm 83? Mm -hmm. And the DVD that you're actually offering with the book, it's an hour teaching on the future for America in Bible Prophecy. There's actually three hours of teaching. One of them is dealing with America, so let's go there for a minute. America, although we're not mentioned in Psalm 83 per se, it's dealing with the Arabs and it's dealing with the Jews over there in Israel. We absolutely have to have a role and involvement with Psalm 83 when you understand America's role as a nation, how God established nations and the purpose for America in God's plan. Our superpower status was not achieved because of our granddaddy's good looks. 
We were blessed to be the country that we are, the world's greatest superpower, and our purposes were, one, to be a safe haven for the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And we've had uh, the first Jews, Solomon Franco, came over in the 16th century. And at this point in time, we've got over 5 million Jews living over here, uh, recently surpassed by Israel. We believe there's 6 million over there now. But the nearest country close to that would be France with 483,500. So clearly, we became a safe haven for the Jewish people, one of the purposes of this country. Two, to be involved in the rebirth of the nation of Israel. Harry S. Truman, one of the most pro-Israel leaders on the scene in 1947, was instrumental in getting UN Resolution 181, the partition plan legislated through the UN, that called for the reestablishment of the nation of Israel. And three, of course, this country was to be a beacon of Christianity to the nations of the world. And of course, with the missionaries that we've done and sent out through this 1800s and 1900s and even still in this century, we are still getting the gospel out to the nations of the world. So God has blessed us with the resources we've had to, to, for those purposes. But I'm concerned. We better be standing on the right side of Israel when this war comes down the pipe. And we're, what are we doing now? We're asking them to recede to their borders, do land for peace deals. Uh, the very thing that it says in Joel 3, 2, when God judges the nations. Right. One of the reasons is they divided my land. I'm very concerned that if we're not on the right side supporting Israel, a strong shoulder of support, a stalwart of support for Israel right now, we will come under the same kind of scrutiny that the British Empire came under. This you know, that's funny that you should mention that because I was sitting here thinking as you were talking. The British laid out the borders <coughs> in, the, in the 1920s that became Jordan and Syria and Israel and so forth, and they did a lot of uh, tinkering with those borders. Mm -hmm. And they actually <coughs> cut Israel's heritage down severely at one point mm -hmm. by changing those borders. And in retrospect, it appears that, that Britain was judged by God for that diplomatic perfidy that, the, that they executed back in those days. Well, I point out in the book that very thing, Gary, uh, the sun never used to set on the British Empire. And after World War I, uh, the UK was given the authority to reestablish a nation of Israel. Lord Balfour came out with his document in 1917 in that time frame that actually called for giving Israel what would be today Israel and modern-day Jordan. But they didn't do it. And, right. and not doing it, they subjected the Jews to the Holocaust. Now from 1917 when that document came out and the sun never used to set on the British Empire, they had connections in Hong Kong and Idi India and in South, South Africa and literally, literally the sun would rise in the east and set on the west and the British Empire never would set on it. But by, by 70 years later, by 1990, the sun sets every day on the British Empire. Yeah. They lost their superpower status and that's what I'm concerned. We're going to lose our superpower mm -hmm. status if we're not on the right side here. If you haven't read Psalm 83 in your Bible, <clears throat> read it while you're waiting for this book to come to your mailbox. <laughs> you need to read Psalm 83 and become familiar with it, and then read this book and find out what it says. <clears throat> Psalm 83, we're offering the book, and by the way, you're watching this, and you can see right there on your screen uh, that it's yours for $15.95 plus shipping and handling. The three DVD set, yours for nineteen ninety five plus shipping and handling. And the beautiful thing about the DVDs is that they they let you visualize. Uh, they have uh, maps, charts. Uh, they have lines of force, arrows, focus, photographs, all kinds of things that <clears throat> you uh, you don't have to have your imagination to see. You've got them right here on the DVD. This is uh, nineteen ninety five, and the package, by the way including a free copy of Prophecy in the News magazine, yours for $34.95. It's the Psalm 83 package. The book, the DVD, a free copy of Prophecy in the News magazine, yours for $34.95 plus shipping and handling. You're looking at the 800 number on your screen right now, so be sure to call. And uh, while you're waiting for your book to arrive, read Psalm 83 kind of get your curiosity going and then read Bill's book and find out what it really says. Bill, good to have you here. As always, any uh, last thoughts? Well, I think it's a prophecy for our time. Uh, it's been revealed at this time for its purpose. And this is the big prophecy that I think starts to set up all the other ones that follow. 
Ezekiel 38, and, and that type of thing. So Gary, I, I would just say you're right. Let them read Psalm 83 and let it sink in with them. It is dealing with the final war between the Arabs and the Jews. Friends, these are amazing times in which we live. Study God's Word, the Bible, and get ready because something big is coming. I really feel it. Uh, I, I, I think we have arrived at a momentous era in the history of planet Earth. And you know what? Our Lord is at the door. Mm. So keep looking up, everybody. 